All right. Hello, everyone. Paul Tran here, just checking all the channels. Going to dive into adding textures and uh, really adding a sort of, um, yeah, honestly, just texture <laughs> to uh, to assets. So something, so it does, so it doesn't necessarily look like it's from a vector program is the goal, even though you're using a vector program. So that is the goal. Just waiting for everyone to file in, and uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me. And yes, fantastic. Looks like I'm live on Twitter and all sorts of places. So let's get this party started and let me go ahead and share my screen hopefully you're having a great new year happy new year everyone first live stream of the uh, decade it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna be good 2020 it's amazing so you can see this design that I'm working on um, let me take down the mic a touch might be a little hot And uh, let's dive into this. Cool. All right, so let's kind of dive into this. This is kind of what I have, Steve, uh, what I have going on, Steve and Shanto and everyone else. Uh, I kind of have this fun little illustration, currently still working on it. Uh, but it could use some cool texture because you could see also like I've done on good old Instagram. Uh, I've been getting into this sort of whole space idea. So it's adding this sort of texture, which I got a lot of responses on, but adding this in Illustrator, right? So you can see what's going on there. Let's do that uh, in Illustrator instead of using Photoshop. Okay, there's a couple different ways we could do it. First off, what you could do is you could select the object. So in this case, just this sphere just has a gradient with it. Go into Effect, and we can go down to some of these fun pixelate um, features. So the most popular one is probably Color Halftone. You might know of this. Um, uh, but this will give it a color halftone effect as if it's being printed. I really like this look. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, you can see these little dots is what it's made of, but that's just the printer offset. But when you zoom out, notice how it gives it that, it's, it just gives it that print quality. So if I wanted to emulate something that was maybe in um, some sci-fi pulp fiction magazine from the 70s or 50s, uh, that's what I can go for. Super easy to do. Any effect we apply will actually appear right over here, as we can see it right here. Um, good to have you here, Dotted Fabric. And Alexander, uh, fantastic. All right, so again, I really like that. That I would then have to apply to everything. So uh, I could actually come in here, select the background, select this, select all these shapes, and do that with everything. All right, which is I'm going to do right now apply color halftone to everything. It's gonna add that effect to everything. Some effects take longer than others, and there's others that I wanna point out to you as well, okay? But we can see it does what we want it to do. The reason I like this is it gets those edges too, okay? So that's gonna be important in a second. But this is also largely, uh, you can see the texture kind of based on how you would output this. So, um, you know, as you can see, as I zoom in or zoom out, you either see the texture or you don't. All right, so we've done that. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to this next one, because what we could do is we could actually just take, say, for instance, a solid color, like I'm going to do in this case, and I will just go ahead and make this a medium gray. Okay, here's my medium gray. Some of you might know what I'm going to be doing next. We can go down to... Uh, down into some of these sketchy looks as well. Okay, so I'm going to apply, I already know what I'm going to apply, reticulation. We'll see it here in a second. Again, not that exciting initially because remember it's just a solid color. It gives me this texture that I can increase the density, right, and adjust the foreground and background level. But the important thing here is I can jump through all of these and see what noted paper, uh, what uh, watercolor, or water paper looks like, you get the idea. So you use this to determine what sort of texture that you want. Okay, so that's what I'm doing right now. In fact, I can go with grain. Again, I'm going to go with reticulation because I don't want to add any additional colors. I want this dark sort of black and white. And I'm going to be aware of the size. It's actually pretty large. 
to be honest with you. If I fit in view, you can see this is actually really large. So those, it's gonna be a lot of tight pixelation uh, things going on there. So with that done, clicking okay, what this is gonna be is this is going to be an overlay on top of our current graphic. As I drop it over it, right? Then what we can do from there is change the blend mode, okay? And I wanna talk about why we would do this as well. Changing this to, so let's try overlay for instance. We know overlay is gonna affect both the darks and the lights. We'll see it change it. Here it is, just like that. The reason I would do this, and maybe Steve knows, maybe Muriel does, but the reason I would typically do this is it gives me the ability to kind of turn this on and off. So the pros and cons, let's talk about this. And there's one, one other cool thing I wanna show you. Um, when I'm actually applying the effect to these shapes, it's pretty cool because I can move them around. Sometimes depending on the effect, especially when it comes to reticulation, uh, it can really kind of slow down um, your, um, your uh, PC or Mac, right? So the processing takes some time anytime you apply effects, especially since I'm applying effects to everything in here, right? So that's why I said, hey, let's just go ahead and apply it to a layer that happens to be on top, as you can see, that we can always change and play with more later on in one fell swoop. I don't have to do it by individual objects, right? We can change this to soft light, for instance, and see how those pixels interact, giving me that gritty texture, which I really like, right? And this one, of course, soft lights is a little softer. I have control just one click away from changing that texture, making it look more intense or less intense. And I can always just turn that off and continue to work the way I usually would. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of nice. That's that's why I like it. Uh, the issue with it, and that's why I'm zoomed right in here for my little spaceship up here. All these lines are going to be crisp, right? And we know if we're printing this, we're not gonna have crisp lines. So if I'm to emulate any sort of texture, I want it to bleed over into the lines. And that's why this one looks good. As I go over here to this one, you could see the lines right in here kind of get distorted um, even more. See, look at that's definitely not crisp right there, okay? Uh, either way, depends on what you, the look that you want kind of determines uh, which one you'll go for, but let's do one more. You ready for this, Anel? This is gonna be... Uh, Check this out. We can take this to a, a step, have a texture like you can see right over here. And these are this is what a lot of people do. It's like, I'll have this texture, I'll have this circle. I'll put this circle actually on top of this texture, selecting both of those, they'll go ahead and let's select both of them. Wait for it. Let's make this a solid color if we can. And make sure I don't have anything funny going on with this one. Let's actually grab this, put it on top. I can actually have this object also set to something like darken, right? So it's only gonna get the dark pixels, right? Or only overlay, right? If it was white and it will affect that object underneath. But let's do this. I actually wanna do a couple things here. I want this texture and let's go ahead and grab this moon. This is what I'm gonna show you. This is what you should probably, or actually if you wanna get really exact with those textures, right right here instead of making a mask that's what i was going to do um i'm going to actually make a mask but i might do it maybe a little bit differently than you're used to doing it so i'm going to pull out this transparency panel okay here's my transparency panel here's my moon right here and right here we're going to make a mask all right it automatically disappears because it says hey whoa you're turning that into a mask i don't want the thing to disappear we'll just turn off clip turning that off Okay, now what we can do is when I select it, I have the choice between pasting something into the mask or onto the object. So right over here, I can select this, this grungy texture, wait for it, right up here, selecting this grungy texture, X, cutting it out, selecting my object, being very aware of what is selected, right? In this case, I have the object selected. I wanna to go to the mask, clicking right there, and now when I do a paste, 
I paste it in and you can see there it is, right? There's pasting that into my particular mask to make that uh, grungy, grungy texture if you wanna make it that way as well. Okay, notice you could also invert that texture as well, but since this is black, you're not gonna see it. So that means it's gonna be dependent on the color. So again, selecting this object, we can change the color to white. Watch what happens. Invert mask, right? We can see it knocks it out, okay? Um, so just, you're either gonna be using black or white and you're gonna be inverting the mask as well, depending on whether you're using black or white, okay? So that's another way to add a grungy texture, aside from clipping masks. And what I usually do is I actually have just a library available to me of these grungy textures. And I will place these in, place in a copy right over here for this last one. Wait for it. When you get into this transparency panel and you're dealing with these masks, this is kind of a pro move, by the way. Um, I need to actually make sure that I'm in this um, object artwork and not on the mask. Because once you click inside of that mask, you might get stuck in there forever, right? But I'm pasting in that look right there. There it is. I can play with the blend modes, do all that fun stuff. I can go ahead and make a clipping mask if I want to as well. It'll sometimes say, hey, you know what? You wanna make this a mask? This is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And there's my mask. Here's my moon, right? And now I can add that texture on top of it as well. So using masks to add fine details is probably what I'm gonna end up doing with this piece, by the way. Because what I want is I wanna have different colors. So I'm gonna use a combination uh, of, um, of features really to get the look that I want. I want the grungy pixelated textures over the whole thing, but then I'm gonna add some some like bursts, right? Some texture on top of that as well, as soon as I grab it and move it over, right? So this, oops. Wait for it. Again, this is why I usually have this on a separate layer because it's using an effect and this is a large graphic it means this is gonna take a while. So let's just kind of turn that off. Let's take this, let's cut it. Let's bring it over here. Wait for it. Pasting it on top like that. There's my grungy texture. And there's some pixelation that I'm working on. So uh, that's where that's at now. Um, I'm probably not gonna animate this, although I could, sure, I know. Anel, you're all about animating right now. I get it. Uh, but this is just gonna be a fun piece that uh, I wanna give it kind of a retro look. So that's why I'm adding these textures, okay? Either like this or like what I have over here. So stay tuned. I'm actually gonna post that on um, Instagram so you'll see that as part of my feed. Uh, instead of this Photoshop version, we're gonna have the Illustrator version of this. Maybe this guy leaving this planet sort of thing. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. Appreciate it. First stream of 2020. I'm live streaming to like four different places, I think. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me. Let's make it a great year and uh, let me know what, you, uh, what your plans are for 2020. Would love to hear uh, what your goals are and see how how I can help you with those goals. All right. So hopefully that works for you. Thanks so much for watching everybody.